I envision aquaculture being really embraced by Maine and by its coastal communities and by the places where aquaculture is taking place and people being proud to have oyster gardens in their in their municipal waters um, and to have sustainable seafood in their backyards and as part of your community it's kind of I envision it kind of like small-scale farms and farmers markets but for seafood. That's Heather Sadusky, coordinator of the Maine Aquaculture Hub, part of Maine Sea Grant giving her vision of what she hopes the aquaculture industry becomes in Maine. I'm Ron Lisnett, and this is the Maine Question Podcast. Fisheries and seafood of all kinds have been a defining feature of Maine in all kinds of ways, providing business opportunities, jobs, and serving sort of as a cultural milepost for our state, pretty much since the very beginning. The same can be said for many states across our country, but despite that fact, you may be surprised to learn that the U.S. is a net importer of seafood. Actually, roughly three quarters of all the seafood we eat comes from overseas. Adding to that, many of our wild-caught fisheries are in severe decline, and several iconic and sought-after species like tuna, swordfish, shrimp, and others are in danger of collapse. So, how do we thread this needle, feeding the growing demand for seafood, saving the resource, and the environment where they grow? One answer, farm those fish. Aquaculture or fish farming is on the rise, but it's barely scratched the surface of what is possible. From 2007 to 2014, the industry almost tripled in size. Maine has a coastline that stretches 3,000 miles, but less than 1% of that is dedicated to aquaculture. The Aquaculture Roadmap is a 10-year plan created by Maine Sea Grant and an industry group, the Maine Aquaculture Association, on behalf of the Maine Aquaculture Hub, it details those opportunities and identifies the obstacles to expanding the types of fish, shellfish, and other species that are farmed. It was developed with feedback from some 150 stakeholders representing nearly 100 organizations and companies who operate in Maine's marine or blue economy. What's the future of fish farming? Heather Sadusky and Deb Bouchard, the director of the Aquaculture Research Institute at UMaine, share their vision for that future on this episode of The Main Question. Thank you both for joining us. Interesting topic and a lot happening in, in your field, I, I'm sure. Maybe let's uh, start with this. Let's define the term. What is aquaculture? How long has it been around? And how long has it been around in Maine? Deb, you want to handle that one first? So aquaculture has actually been around since like 500 before Christ. So it's been around for a very long time. And in Maine, it's actually been around since the 1800s. Um, there have been laws on the books since then for dealing with aquaculture. Essentially, it can be defined as the breeding, rearing, and harvesting of fish, shellfish, and aquatic plants in all types of water environments for food production. But also, people don't often think of this, aquaculture is also for conservation, restoration, and fishery stocking programs. So we see that in Maine with uh, trout and salmon, right? Right. Maine's Inland Fish and Wildlife Department has had a, a, a restoration and stocking program since the 1800s and still runs eight hatcheries today, primarily for trout species. Heather, what does the growth curve look like and, and what role or what percentage does it play in the overall seafood industry in Maine? Yeah, aquaculture is really expanding um, as a contributor to Maine's marine economy and in particular seafood production. As Debbie mentioned, we've got over 700 limited purpose aquaculture license sites across the state. Um, and so that in since 2014, our harvest because from all these sites has more than doubled in value and in volume. And one really neat number is that oysters alone were valued at over $9 million in 2019. And that made them the fourth most valuable commercial species coming out of Maine. Um, and that's the most recent data we have from 2019, pre-pandemic. Nowadays, we have, even, we have even more farmers coming online. And what does the growth curve look like? Is that uh, headed up? Yes, absolutely. So Maine's aquaculture sector is steadily um, growing over the past probably decade or so. We've got a real variety of species as well, which is exciting. We've got um, finfish aquaculture, we've got mussels, kelp, um, oysters, scallops. The, the opportunities are really kind of starting to grow for the sector as a whole in the state. Can I add to that as well? Sure. 
So while the predominant species that we culture is Atlantic salmon, we still are, are moving very quickly in shellfish species and in seaweed. In fact, if you look at the number of what we call per, uh, limited purpose aquaculture leases from 2011 to 2020, those increased from 44 LPAs to over 700. But I wanna put that into perspective. With 3,000 miles of coastline in Maine, aquaculture farms only use like 1,700 acres of the, of the ocean. And also of those over 700 limited purpose aquaculture leases, those over 700 take up only eight acres. So a tiny percentage. Right. So we clearly have, you know, the, the room to grow this this industry for our own food security and, and healthy aquaculture products. How unique is Maine in terms of its industry? Is, is Maine set up really to, uh, to do this kind of thing? Either. I would say yes, um, both with our you know, natural resources and freshwater abundance and our, our marine environment. You know, right now we, we do culture over 24 aquacultured species and we are attracting the larger investments of land-based industry. Again, the species include a variety of shellfish, seaweed, and in our land-based, of course, it will be Atlantic salmon. We're moving into eel production and yellowtail fish. Yeah, I'd agree with Debbie. We have the resources for aquaculture here in Maine, and that's you know what brought me to Maine in the first place as well, was that aquaculture is happening here. Um, and to Debbie's point, we have this extensive coastline only a tiny fraction of it is currently being used for aquaculture, but there's, there's certainly opportunity to utilize it for seafood production, but also for restoration projects, um, for blue-green infrastructure. There's a lot of opportunity here in Maine. A lot of people would find it surprising to know that despite the numerous fisheries we have, both wild and, and farmed, that in the U.S. we import the bulk of our seafood. How is that possible, and, and what kinds of seafood are we bringing in from overseas? If you look at uh, recent reports, the United States imports 70 to 85 percent of its seafood, and that's in finfish, shellfish, and, and all the varieties of, of seafood. But nearly 50 percent of that imported seafood is now aquaculture produced. So driven by imports, the U.S. seafood trade deficit has, is really close to $16.9 billion, and that was reported in 2019. Although the U.S. fresh and saltwater aquaculture production is worth around 1.2 to 1.5 billion dollars, um, we still rank 16th in aquaculture production globally. And Heather, so there's room for p people consuming fish in in the United States for that ability to provide for ourselves. There, there's certainly room to grow there, right? Yeah, exactly. So as Debbie mentions. We are already consuming aquaculture seafood. It's just coming um, from other countries. And so, you know, that's part of some initiatives at the federal level to, you know, produce our own domestic seafood. And aquaculture is exactly the type of solution that's going to enable us to increase it because our wild caught fisheries are essentially maxed out. We, if we're going to be producing any more seafood, it'll have to come through aquaculture. So Maine Sea Grant leads what's called the Maine Aquaculture Hub. Uh, can you tell us why this hub was formed and what it's been working on? He Heather, that's probably one for you to field, right? Sure. Yeah. So the Maine Aquaculture Hub was developed in 2019. That's when I came on board. And it was um, developed with the intention to support the aquaculture sector and help address barriers to strengthening aquaculture in Maine um, and you know, start looking ahead to a sustainable future for aquaculture we have kind of become a network for doing so and have a handful of activities. There are three primary ones that I've been working on. First is an aquaculture training program geared towards new sea farmers and existing to help them get past the startup level. Second is an RFP. So the past two years, we've run a call for proposals specifically intended to fund industry-led projects. And then third is this roadmap. So um, over the past few years, we've been holding stakeholder focus group meetings uh, to get everybody's input on what they want to see in, in terms of the future of aquaculture in the state of Maine. And that report, that roadmap was recently released just this year. Deb, that just came out. How do you think it's going to be used by the industry? 
Actually, I think I would let Heather answer this one. Obviously, though, the industry had a tremendous amount of input into this as we held over 10 stakeholder workshops for, for getting feedback from the industry. But let's see what Heather says. <laughs> so in terms of utilizing the roadmap, um, as, as Debbie mentioned, it was a super collaborative process to get input in developing the roadmap and what it was going to include, which is four goals, um, each with a number of different action items. And so when it comes to implementation, the way we envision it is that, yes, industry will use it, the aquaculture sector, but also all of the other voices and organizations that were present and helped participate in building this roadmap. So we've got um, action items spelled out with the organizations that would be most applicable, most relevant for taking on that action item, as well as resources listed that would be required to take on each item. Um, so we definitely envision it being a, a group effort um, and that when it comes to utilizing it and implementing it, we'll definitely need multiple partners. The way aquaculture has developed, it's probably a little bit all over the map in terms of uh, companies starting up and not coordinating or, or that kind of thing. This sort of gives everybody, uh, gets them on the same page, so to speak. Yeah, the idea is definitely to kind of build a blueprint. Um, that's why we're calling it a roadmap, you know, outlining what it is that all of these voices, everybody collectively would like to see, and then, you know, building in the steps for how to get there. So we've got, you know, the four overarching goals. Um, goal one, develop a streamlined licensing and permitting process that balances the rights of an applicant and the public. Goal two, increase integration and understanding of aquaculture in Maine's coastal communities. Uh, goal three, expand and promote the Maine seafood brand. And goal four is overall to make Maine a leader in triple bottom line sustainable aquaculture. But each one of those includes aquaculture producers, includes government departments, includes research institutes, nonprofits, municipalities. Uh, all these types of people will definitely have to be involved, and they have been so far. I mean, like you said, aquaculture is starting to touch a lot of, a lot of different groups, a lot of different people. Deb, can you talk about the positive effect that aquaculture can have on wild-caught fisheries? Can it do something to alleviate pressure on certain fisheries? I guess what I would report is that aquaculture has been the world's fastest-growing food production system for decades, and today provides over double that of wild capture fisheries for human consumption. So it's clearly, if you look at you know any of the, the, the uh, graphs that they put out, natural fisheries has kind of straight lined now and aquaculture is continuing to grow. So it's definitely alleviating the pressures on, 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 on natural fisheries. There is a lot of research going on here at the University of Maine in, in any number of areas. Talk about some of the research going on and, and what might be coming down the road. Are there any initiatives that you think are really going to come to the forefront or are really sort of going to grab headlines moving forward? In the last two years, we've developed a strong partnership with the USDA Agricultural Research Service to really highlight our research capabilities in finfish and shellfish. And for finfish, it's primarily involved with Atlantic salmon, but it's allowing us to uh, touch on the or address the priorities globally that the industry is, is asking for. And part of that is the University of Maine is going to be working on finfish nutrition and alternative proteins, which is definitely needed for a sustainable aquaculture. And then also at the Darling Marine Center, this the USDA partnership supports work on growth studies to support selective breeding efforts and carrying capacities for models for shellfish aquaculture with particularly with oysters and scallops. And then UMaine is also involved in multi-state research initiatives, looking at the new and emerging recirculating aquaculture systems industries. And, and this is allowing us to actually engage with the industry and address the bottlenecks for research that they're pointing out to us. Heather, maybe you can talk about the roadmap and does it touch on some of these other issues that are out there, workforce development, recruiting, people to go into the industry, working with the indigenous populations in Maine, and then, as Debbie mentioned, the nutrition advances too. Absolutely. We have a couple action items that speak to each, each of those, um, particularly in goal number four. Um, but a big one is workforce development because 
that will be necessary if the sector, you know, is to grow stronger and more resilient. And as, you know, our marine economy shifts, it'll be really important to have that workforce. And so we have a number of training programs across the state, but there are efforts underway to kind of coordinate those and um, make sure we're serving the right needs. So, you know, what do farmers need help with on the farm? Where do they need workers and what can we what can we offer in terms of training? Debbie might be able to speak more to involving indigenous populations. I know she's been involved with some of that. The Gulf of Maine Research Institute a few years ago did a project where they looked at the agriculture industry workforce needs in which we uh, actually also with the Maine Agriculture Association came up with industry competencies of what they wanted to see for workers. So at UMaine, we, we developed a micro-credentialing pro program where we can take on lifelong learners and people who aren't like matric matriculated students to actually learn the core essentials of aquaculture in order for them to address the industry's needs. With that, we also think of equity across the board too for all of our communities in Maine of which we have four tribal communities. And we recently put in for a, a USDA um, grant, which is a research experiential or exper uh, research extension and education undergraduate program. And this in particular is going to reach out to indigenous communities across the country. But it's also going to take a different look at uh, looking at Western science versus indigenous science and combining the two. Because, you know, the, the indigenous communities across the globe have also been doing aquaculture for far longer than the, the new, more modern aquaculture that we see. One of the challenges, and I think you touched on it a little bit, is nutritional advances. What do you feed the fish that, are, that feed us? So is there, is there work? Can you expand on that a little bit more in terms of are, are you looking for alternate sources of feed for the fish that are farmed? You know, a lot of your high value aquaculture fish are carnivorous fish. So they eat essentially other fish. And as you know, fish meal is part of that product. And that, as the demand for protein increases and we've, you know, um, our natural fisheries is depleted, we have to come up with other alternatives of protein. So we're looking at algae, um, we're looking at insect meals. We're looking at all of those things and their effect on the growth of carnivorous and, you know, especially a, a high value fish like Atlantic salmon. So even that, and it also with larval stages of aquaculture species, larval feed development is very important. Um, we have a researcher here that does micro encapsulation. So we're beginning to target sort of the, the, the real roadblocks to, to a sustainable fin fish industry in that regard. And I will note that here in Maine, we have a lot of aquaculture with species that are unfed. So shellfish don't require any feed. Um, they're filter feeders, and so they extract their nutri all the nutrients they need from, from the water, from the seawater, and they're actually cleaning the water as they feed. Um, and seaweed is the same way. You don't have to really feed it anything. You don't have to fertilize it. And so not only are they unfed, you know, sustainable species in that sense, but they're also providing ecosystem services for the surrounding environment. Heather, what's the main brand around aquaculture and, and the products? And is there work being done to better communicate that brand and just communicate better about the industry as a whole? Yes, I love this question because the main brand is really strong. You know, I mean, Maine is iconic for a lot of reasons, and that certainly translates to seafood. I mean, everyone across the entire world knows about Maine lobster. And so we are, you know, aquaculture is lucky enough to benefit from that main brand, but it's also really contributing to that main brand. We've got incredible aquaculture seafood products coming out of our state, and people know it. It's recognized across the country and it's recognized globally. So um, we're, you know, as as aquaculture grows and as we produce more sustainable seafood this way, that's very much part of the mission is communicating that to the end consumer. So letting people know that not this isn't just a Maine oyster. You know, this was grown in the cold, clean waters of off Maine's coast, and you know it helped 
it helped the surrounding environment while it was growing. And all these benefits and attributes um, are certainly part of what we're doing when it comes to, you know, working with farmers on marketing and getting the word out to consumers, outreach and education, letting people know that there's there's a lot more to it than just seafood on your plate. Yeah, the main brand, I think, is sometimes underappreciated, and hopefully that changes. So finally, just a question for both of you. We always ask this uh, in these podcasts and uh, always get interesting answers, but paint us the picture. As this roadmap, if it's followed as you hope it will be, what will aquaculture in Maine look like 10 years down the road? Are you hopeful about the future prospects for this? Whoever wants to go first. I'm super hopeful. I envision 10 years from now, I envision aquaculture being really embraced by Maine and by its coastal communities and um, by the places where aquaculture is taking place and people being proud to have oyster gardens in their in their municipal waters um, and to have sustainable seafood in their backyards and as part of your community it's kind of I envision it kind of like um, you know small scale farms and farmers markets but for seafood the, the marine version and so I'm really hopeful and I think that with all the all the partners that are named in the roadmap that's definitely a possibility I think it's it's feasible that we could get there. Deb, we'll give you the final word. Well, I'd like to think that we have, you know, the best of sort of all worlds with Maine's environment and our coastal waters. We have small players, we have the small farmers, and we have the larger players that are coming on. I'd like to see that the recirculated land-based farms that are coming in, that, that, they develop, that they develop well and that they're successful, providing a lot more food security for the United States and the fact that we're not importing fish anymore. We're actually producing it to, for, our lo- for our communities um, throughout the United States. So I'd like to see that there be, you know, in 10 years that there is a diversity of the type of farms we have and that we're thriving sustainable aquaculture industry. Well, let's hope that all happens. We appreciate you taking the time to share your story with us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for joining us. You can find all our episodes in a bunch of places, Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and SoundCloud, UMaine's Facebook and YouTube pages, as well as Amazon and Audible. Drop us a note if you have a question or comment. Our email address is mainquestion at maine.edu. This is Ron Lisnett. We'll catch you next time on The Main Question.